In this series of videos, I'll talk about the right way to estimate alpha, the exponent for a power law. So the situation is you have a set of data, you suspect that it's distributed according to a power law, and you want to figure out the best estimate for alpha that you can. It turns out that this is um, somewhat subtle uh, statistically, and in particular, the sort of simple and obvious thing to do, which I've sort of been hinting at, make a log, log plot, look for a line, find the slope, turns out actually to be the wrong way to do it. So um, I'm just going to give an overview of the approach and methods um, that's the, a better way to do it. And there are two reasons for this that I'm just going to give the, an overview. One is that the statistics is, uh, I think, a bit too involved for, for the scope of this course and probably for many people's goals. So I'm going to try to give sort of a 10,000 foot uh, sort of higher level view, touch the sort of main conceptual points. Um, also, the techniques that I'm describing were all sort of tied together and presented in a really, really nice paper by Aaron Closet, uh, Cosma Shalizi, and Mark Newman. Um, I'll put the reference down here, and that's in the additional resources section at the end of this unit. So if you want to, um, after you watch these videos, try this out for yourself, since you have maybe just to, to learn it, or because you have your own set of data you want to analyze properly, um, the paper I just mentioned should be a really good guide. It's nicely written and it's very clear. And I've also included links to um, software that will implement the statistical procedures uh, that I'll describe. So again, um, I'm going to step through at a somewhat um, conceptual level some of the issue, issues associated with um, estimating alpha for power laws, and how some modern statistical techniques uh, can help us get around some of those issues. So let's talk through some of the issues associated with estimating alpha and work our way towards um, an optimal or correct way of doing so. So the picture is we have a bunch of measurements, and we suspect that it's um, described by a power law distribution and we want to know, well, what's the best fit? So we want to figure out uh, what alpha is. And we could work with the distribution itself, or the cumulative distribution, which is also a power law, but with a different exponent, alpha minus one instead of alpha. And it would have a different normalization constant out front, but um, we're going to be focusing on these exponents. That's usually what one is interested in. Okay, so the way I've been hinting at doing this um, is to start with a histogram of word probabilities, P of X, and then make a log-log plot of that. And linear behavior on a log-log plot is signature of power law behavior. So we could figure out what the best fit is, and uh, the, the best linear fit, and then the slope would be the exponent. Um, there are some challenges associated with this, and there are problems that sort of plague histograms in general. And that is, usually when forming a histogram, you want to have set the bin width, the sort of range of values you're using, to be such that um, there's roughly an equal number of data points in each bin. Um, and you also don't want to have the bins so small that there's only one or zero data points in each bin. So when you form a histogram, and if you're done these um, on your own in research or maybe sort of discovered this, that you can make histograms look very different depending on how you choose the bin sizes. And it's particularly challenging for these power law distributions because down here we have some very, very large numbers and then the numbers get very, very small. So if we want to have more or less roughly kind of sort of equal numbers of data points in the bins, we're going to need to use non-uniform bin sizes. So we would start with small bins and then use larger bins and larger bins and larger bins. Um, the number of points here is, is getting, uh, getting, getting very small, so a bigger bin is, is needed. And that sort of approach is sometimes called logarithmic binning. So that can be helpful for sort of smoothing out a histogram. So that's if we wanted to work with this. Um, you could also work with this, right? So that's the cumulative distribution function, 
And these are nice, equivalently it's the rank distribution. And these are nice because um, we don't have any of this arbitrariness associated with histograms where we need to decide what the bin width is, do we do logarithmic binning or not. This is just a, a regular old function. There's, we don't really have, have any choice in how we plot it. Um, so that's uh, it's a much less sort of arbitrary, more statistically stable or robust sort of thing. So again, cumulative distribution function. We can take a uh, look at a log-log plot, see some nice linear behavior, and estimate the slope that way. And you can see, if I put these together, that the cumulative distribution function is always going to be a smoother sort of thing. It doesn't have these sort of sampling and binning challenges that one has with a log-log histogram. So those are a couple of approaches to estimating alpha. Work with this, work with this in one of a number of ways, make a log-log plot, and find a slope. But what we'll see is that that actually can give results that are badly misleading or just flat out wrong. So what, what we're going to look for then is some other principle to guide us. Is there any sort of principled way um, to suggest what the best alpha should be? So the approach we need, a uh, principle for figuring out the best alpha, is something known as a maximum likelihood estimator. And so let me explain that. Um, I'll explain it in the context of power laws, but it's a very general and very powerful and widely applicable idea. Um, and we'll see where it leads. So the picture is, we're going to assume that we have, that whatever data we're working with is described by this power law. And we want to estimate this um, alpha. So this is an example of parametric estimation. Um, there's a parameter alpha that we get to vary. A is not independent because it can be written in terms of alpha um, due to normalization constraint. So we have a distribution with a parameter, and we have some data, x1, x2, x3, a whole bunch of measurements, all the way up to xn. So what do we do? So the idea is that we want to form something called the likelihood function. And it's just probability of data given the parameter. Probability of data given the parameter alpha. So here, x without an index, this means the whole big data set. And if I wanted to write that out, um, so that's going to be the product of the probability of this times this times this times this and so on. So x1 given alpha, px2 given alpha, all the way up to pxn given alpha. So these are independent samples of our data. And so the probability of this and this is the probability of this times this. So this is an expression for the probability or likelihood of our data given the parameter. So then we want to use this to think about what the best parameter is. And the idea is we want to choose the parameter so that um, it makes the data the most likely. So let me, um, let me write that. So let's see. So we choose the alpha that maximizes the probability of the data. And that alpha is known as the maximum likelihood estimator. So we're estimating, so this is just an estimate for alpha. We don't know the true value, that's, that's um, unknown. Um, so, the estimator that we'll choose is the one that maximizes the probability of the data. So this is a general principle that one can follow in doing parametric estimation of any sort. And um, in mathematical statistics classes, one can prove, um, in mathematical statistics texts, one proves a number of really nice results about maximum likelihood estimator 
that it's consistent, it will converge to the true value, it will converge as quickly um, as any other estimator in the limit of large data, and, and so on. So maximum likelihood estimators are the way to go, particularly in um, maybe a complex setting where sort of the obvious thing may not, uh, may not work. So, um, so this is a general idea behind maximum likelihood. And what we now want to do is choose an alpha that makes this as large as possible. And this looks maybe at first glance like a horrible high dimensional task, but it's actually a one dimensional problem. There's only one thing that can vary, which is alpha. And so this is actually, in a sense, a slightly complicated, but nevertheless a calculus one sort of problem uh, of maximizing a function of one variable. So one can carry that out, and one arrives at the following formula for the maximum likelihood estimator. So here it is, the maximum likelihood estimator for alpha for a power law. So given a data set, x1, x2, up to xn, and assuming that the data is described by a power law with parameter alpha, can remember that a can be written in terms of alpha. If one carries out that process to maximize uh, the likelihood, one comes up with this estimator alpha. So this, plugging into this formula, will give you an alpha that makes the data the most likely. And so this is the best estimator. Um, in statistical inference, it's typical to put a hat on a quantity that's an estimator. So that indicates that this is our best guess as to the true value of alpha, which is unknown. So one would plug into this formula, data points x1, x2, and so on in here, and do the sum and the natural log and blah, 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 and you'll get a number and that'd be your best alpha. So great, this is a recipe that we can follow. Let me say one thing about x min. So x min is the smallest x for which we see linear behavior. So for example, uh, this is data from Mark Newman's paper again. Uh, citations for number of papers. It looks like there's a nice linear region here, and that's what we'll want to choose um, to, to fit to. That's where we expect there to be a power law. Um, and so then, but, so we want to throw out, throw out these sort of curvy data points when doing that fitting. And so the sort of lowest x value that we would choose, that would be x min. So um, as I just described it, that seems very, very subjective. How should you choose x min just by i to sort of make it look straight? Um, and that'll be the topic of one of the next videos, how to choose x min. For now, let's imagine that we've already chosen x min, and we want to know, given that our choice for x min, what's the best alpha? And this is the formula that, that tells us that. This is for a given choice of x min, this is the best alpha to choose.